So I make a lot of videos about dry eye on this channel and it occurred to me that many of my patients or patients that are watching these videos with dry eye or neurotrophic keratitis are likely to experience the frustration that is prior authorizations at some point during your care. If your eye doctor has recently prescribed you a drug like Restasis, Sequa, or Zydra that require a prior authorization through your insurance, then this video is for you. Make sure to watch it first before you go to the pharmacy so that you can avoid frustration or paying too much for your eye medication. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to eye school with me, Dr. D. Welcome, make yourself comfy and get ready to learn about prior authorizations. Before we get started, this channel is all about education and I love creating this community of pupils. You can catch all previous eye school episodes in the playlist I've curated below. If you came here for dry eye specifically, for instance, there's a plethora of videos already made, so I invite you to check those out. Today we're talking about insurance, a topic that I've never actually covered before on this channel. But as a dry eye specialist, I actually encounter prior authorizations every single day. And there's something we're always explaining to our patients. And so I thought this video could be useful um, not only to use in my office for our own patients, but also help helpful to this community of patients with dry eye that we have here on this channel. So a prior authorization is used by your insurance company to manage costs and also to make sure that you're being prescribed something that you really need. Not all insurance companies have them and it even varies from plan to plan within the same insurance company, but they're quite common for very specific dry eye medications that I use like Restasis, Zydra, Sequa, and even Oxervate, which I've made a video about and is used for neurotrophic keratitis. You'll also see prior authorizations with other new and expensive eye medications. Those may trigger a prior auth as well, like for instance, if you were prescribed a brand new glaucoma medication. How it works is that your doctor is gonna write the prescription that they feel you need, and then that prescription is sent to the pharmacy of your choosing. The pharmacy is gonna have all of your information regarding your prescription coverage, and that's where the prior authorization typically will get flagged should your insurance require one. The pharmacy then typically sends the insurance company's prior authorization form back to your doctor, who then has to fill out additional information reg regarding your need for the medication before that insurance company will pay for your medicine. Each insurance company has different criteria for when they feel a medication is justified. So if your doctor answers a question not to the insurance company's liking, um, then your entire request can be denied. So in an office like mine where we specialize in dry eye and prescribe these medications literally every day, we've developed systems to help this process go much more smoothly for both parties. Once you've done a lot of prior authorizations, it does become fairly apparent which plans will be requiring one. And in my office, we also have an additional tool called Cover My Meds. And it's a system where we centralize all of our prior authorizations and that keeps track of all of the patients who have active prior authorizations in progress and all of the different insurance companies' different forms. So in my office, when I'm prescribing a dry eye medication, my team knows which medicines are likely to trigger a prior authorization and they go ahead and proactively put the information in cover my meds first. So we skip those back and forths in favor of just presenting the pharmacy with the prescription as well as the prior approval paperwork from the get-go. So if this sounds complicated and confusing, it's because it is. It's a major headache for your doctor's office and you, but there are some things you can do to help your doctor's office and yourself through the process. My first tip is to share all over-the-counter treatments you've tried with your doctor, even if that seems tedious. So in the case of dry eye, insurance companies want to know what drops you've tried and failed with, and some companies do require two to three specific brands you have tried. 
My second tip is to be patient. So don't run to the pharmacy right away. Know that it will take some time to get your drops approved. My third is be flexible. Insurance companies won't always pay for your doctor's first choice. In specialty offices like ours, we're equipped to help you find the best of the alternatives that your insurance will cover. In some cases, we can pivot and send your medicine to a specialty pharmacy that caps their copays instead, or we even have pay at time of service options in dry eye drops that can save you money. So make sure to let me know what questions you have about prior authorizations down below and share your experience with other dry eye sufferers as well. One of the biggest things I love about this community is that it's a place for us to share our stories with each other. And so make sure you do that in the comments below. That is it for today's iSchool lesson. Before we go, I've got today's fun fact for you. Today's fun fact is prior authorizations are initiated by insurance companies to save money and ensure that the doctor is prescribing you something that you really need. So even though they're a headache, there is a purpose for prior authorizations. That is it for today. Class is dismissed. I'll see you next time.